Gil was talking about, and you also like we're talking about taking care of the self uh, off camera. Oh, self care. Yeah, um, we're older dancers. Mm -hmm. We're not like twenty one and eighteen year olds going ham without warming up. How has you know? I guess the value of warming up, taking care of your body, nutrition. How has that? How has the importance of that flipped everything? You know what I mean. So like from like for me, um, proper warming up has been huge. Mm -hmm. Doing yeah. therapy workouts for my back has been huge. Mm -hmm. um, especially what I eat. I, I I remember this one antics performance. I I ate a whole <laughs> box of spicy patsu. Mm. Oh my gosh! <laughs> An hour before. Worst mistake of my life, because oh. I had an ulcer throughout the whole show. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, and then and it shows in the performance because like, one part I was supposed to jump. Yeah, and then I go, Ugh. and then Amy was like, "Oh my god, I'm like, what was that?" Oh my and god. then, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and, and then and like, it was just a jump. Yeah, and then <laughs> Amy was like, "Was that the night?" Oh yeah, that's when you got your ulcer. So oh, yeah. No. yeah, so that's where it's like the like I mean I. I I knew before, but it was like we're out. I've been craving pads to you. Yeah. So yeah. I know how you guys started switching your taking care of yourself nutritionally, mentally, physically. Yo, I went through a huge shift, mm -hmm. paradigm shift yeah. in my nutrition. Um, I've always okay. been pretty uh, like physically fit and conscious of the mechanics of my body and the state of my body. Um, but then the nourishment and nutrition added a whole new dimension to that. So I had a situation where my toxic lifestyle was caused me to go through a change in my um, mentality and my emotions. And I started getting really bad anxiety and a little bit of depression at, mm -hmm. one, at one point in time. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I used that as a, a paradigm shift. I literally started meditating every day. Mm. I started reading books about um, consciousness, building up your, you know, your self worth and your inner um, inner universe, if that's the right word. I don't know. Books like The Power of Now, The Secret, mm, um, The books. Alchemist. Oh, great! Book. You know what I mean? Just a lot of books along those. I started writing every day, writing down everything, writing all my dreams, and I also changed my nutrition. And I also stopped um, at that period of time. Stopped smoking weed and drinking alcohol. Um, but at that moment is where I really gathered a lot of very helpful information that I still continue now. So there's a philosophy in Eastern, um, Eastern culture and Eastern medicine called yin and yang. Most mm. people are familiar with this, but it's, it's very deep. And I have a couple of close friends that are practitioners of Eastern medicine and acupuncture mm -hmm. that really, really helped me during this time. Um, shout out to my close friend, Andrew Ng. He's a dancer also, but he's also a martial artist and healer. Um, so he gave me so much helpful information and it's really to understand that I had an imbalance in my yin and yang and I had, I was too hot. That's very much my personality. I'm very hot. Um, people always, when somebody's close to me, they always touch me and they're like, oh, you're so, you're so hot. I'm cold and stuff like that. Not right now because we're in the freezing ass cold. But, um, and I'm typically a person that gets warmed up and sweats a lot and my face turned red and I love like salty foods, spicy mm -hmm. foods, oh, cool. garlic jalapeno stuff like this that's really hot and I had to realize how to balance that out and also how that feels in my body yeah. when I'm too hot mm -hmm. um, which hmm. I could have them switched but I think it's a uh, yan deficiency in a yin I don't know I can't remember which, <laughs> which is which but I know it's hot and cold so I learned a lot of those yeah. foods that you can identify that helps bring you back to balance when you're too hot mm. and so for me that's tremendous um, also acknowledging your your body and the physical condition that you're in when you're about to dance or perform is very important. I'm 36 years old. Mm -hmm. I've been through ACL replacement surgery and physical therapy Ooh. and all that and come back to break dancing yeah. at the age of 33. You know mm. what I mean? So yeah. like that is tremendous for me and th that time, that like two year span when I was unable to break full out was a huge time of contemplation and change in my life and when i started dancing again it was like this revelation of how much i love dance and how deep of a connection i have to it and how great it is for me in my life and it's like after that i feel like i got so much better i felt so much better about it and i really became empowered by knowing that this is my path and this is like 
so so deeply a part of me and and my path with it is so much more powerful because of that so mm -hmm. whatever your age whatever your level of physical fitness nutrition whatever that is to you always analyze that i have some friends yo i got one friend this guy's a personal trainer a model a dancer all that stuff this guy's yoked as long as i've known him he's always had a perfect body but yo he can go eat, eat mcdonald's every day and get a mcrib and then go after that and eat biscuits and gravy and like and like his Jeez. body will always be perfect that's just his, his genetics, physiology yeah. what he his has genetics, that's yeah. what he's working with I'm not working with that. Yeah. Okay. So I have to realize what works for me. Some people want to eat white rice every day. Some yeah. people want to eat bread and um, donuts and bagels and stuff like that every yeah. day. I'm neither of those. I have to have a balance. That's just how my body works. And I encourage everybody out there, learn about yourself and your body. When you mm. start to feel that thing in your gut, when your stomach goes, and then when Ooh, you take yeah. wicked shit, you know, <laughs> no, no contact. Think about that. What did I eat? What made that happen? You know what I mean? Was it too much coffee or was it McDonald's? You know what I'm saying? Like or, what yeah. was it? And analyze that and analyze how that's working through your body. So that was a really long answer, but this or is, I'm really glad go. you asked that because it's something I feel very deeply about. Yeah, so it you. is. Yeah, if <laughs> or if you can't go when you're constipated. That's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. No, no. Take some coffee and you'll be okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Figure that out. Um, uh, similar to him, it's the same thing. Um, I think I went through a major shift, and it's not to say I was unaware of these things, because obviously I had nursing education, so I did have that advantage. But sometimes going into, um, when you're thinking about physical fitness or just movement in itself, you're thinking, oh yeah, it's gonna take care of me. I'm, I'm so young, nothing's gonna hurt me, my knees are gonna be good, I'm gonna have all that energy forever. And then people tell you, oh, the older you get, the older you get, it, things are going to get worse. It's mm. true to a certain degree, mm -hmm. only if you stop caring. Yeah. So uh, I think I went through a phase where I, I did stop caring, and I thought um, the answer to all my problems was just to dance all the time. And that's not how you're just going for me, for my body, how I'm just going to stay physically fit. And so I've come into this space where I'm returning back to what my version of health and fitness looks like because uh, I feel like I even allowed um, others' perceptions of what health and fitness look like um, gauge what I was gonna do in my life. So for me, it's like it's very important now to know what it is that I'm eating, what I'm staying away from eating, um, what I'm putting into my body before performances, after performances. And not pat to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And definitely knowing that I need to to stretch before and after and knowing things like, uh, he talked about it earlier, like your own version of cryotherapy or your own version of yoga. So, cause even if I can't get into a yoga class, I understand that some version of stretching and doing yoga poses is gonna help me to elongate my muscles and still maintain that flexibility that's needed in movement. Yeah. And whether that be before or after, I, I need to lift some weights, you know, to build a muscle. So it's like putting all these practices into my everyday life, but seeing how I can balance it and structure it into, into my life so that it's a daily habit, a weekly habit, a monthly practice, and then an overall just um, way of life. And not just thinking I need to do it right now, I just need to prep for the gig for three months because I'm gonna do this show. And then after the show is over, okay, cool, eat whatever you want, do whatever you do. No, knowing that it goes beyond just being a dancer, it's just um, longevity. Yeah. Longe if you see longevity, um, how do you wanna feel beyond just being a dancer? So I think all that stuff I am now start like putting into my life slowly but um surely and making sure that i maintain it and not just have it be like a just the answer for right now or just yeah. this year it's a new year new me like no i want to maintain it in my life and i think what it starts with too is definitely your mentality your mindset and knowing uh why know your why of why you want to do this if you're doing it because of just the way you look well, then that's all you're going to get. It's just the way you yeah. look. But if you're doing it for mind, body, and soul, you are going to go through a whole, uh, um, a whole transformation of self yeah. if you understand that 
the reason why you're thinking about all these things is more than just your physical appearance. It's your inner, your outer. It's um, how you're affecting those around you. So if, if I'm eating healthy and I'm noticing uh, I'm, what I'm eating consciously, people around me are going to be aware of it and ask questions and maybe want to now make conscious um, changes in their eating habits. And if I am, um, instead of getting like full of anxiety, let's say before I go out for a show, instead I'm working on like deep breathing and um, going into a positive mental space, someone around me or the energy around with like my other company members, they're going to feel that as well and maybe want to put that into practice for themselves. Totally. So yeah. it's more than just a right now type of a thing. It's understanding what you need to do for your longevity and how you want to do it for the everyday for your own self, mm -hmm. right? And knowing that you are impacting others while you're doing it. And I think that's important. So I don't know, it, 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 I don't want to say what I do or what he does or what he does is going to be good for everybody. But I would say it's really about listening to your own self. What do you need for your body? Right. What do you need for your mindset? What yeah. do you need for your soul? And um, figuring out how to, oh, how to put that into your life on the regular. I want to talk about quickly about self-talk. Um,